Hey, YouTubies. YouTubies, it's your girl Tay, and I'm back with another video. Today, I'll be doing a story time about the time that I gave birth to both of my children. So, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a mom of two. I have a five year old daughter named Starmaya, and I have a three year old son named Antonio. So, let's get right into this video. Yeah. Okay, so I'll start off with telling you guys about my birth experience with my five year old daughter, Starmaya. So, Let's go back five going on six years ago. Okay. I remember I reached past 40 weeks and I was just like, when is this little girl going to come out? Like, when is she going to come out? So, on October 16th, her birthday, I went into labor. I um, woke up, I could, I could say probably about five, six in the morning and I just knew I was in labor. Like, I felt the contractions and everything. So, told my mother, my family, everybody was in the house. We all got into the cab and we went to the hospital. And the hospital probably was about uh, close to 30 minute drive from where I was living at. And I say it was about $30, $40 in a cab. But I wanted to have my babies there because this hospital is like special to my family. Like they just work so good with everybody. It's owned by Jewish people. so. Everything is like professional and on time and good. Like the hospital is just perfect. So a whole lot of my family members was born there. So I'm like, I'm gonna have my kids there too. You know, I had a hospital like right down the block, like literally like two blocks away from my house, from my house. And then was another one that was about probably about ten minutes in the car. But I still wanted to take, I mean, go to the hospital that was way on the other side of Brooklyn because that's where I wanted to have my kids. But all along, when I was having doctor appointments, I was going to the hospital that was like two blocks away because I was being lazy. I didn't want to go all the way to West Bubble to get um an appointment, I mean, to get checked out. So I was just going to the hospital that was like right across the street from my house. So once I got there, they was just like, who are you? Like, we don't see you in our records or anything. I'm like, um, I have these papers with my HIV test saying that I'm good and I'm able to push out and everything like I don't know if you guys want to do re redo the test or whatever but you guys could like you're more than welcome so I can't remember if they gave me the test again or not but I just know that they was just like the next time you're ready to give birth please make sure you go to one of our clinics so that we know who you are when you come in here and I'm just like whatever they actually tried to send me home and I'm just like listen I'm over it i'm not going home but since they wanted to send me home i was like whatever i'll go home so as i was waiting to get discharged the lady came and like um we don't like the way your child's heartbeat is so we're about to induce you and make you go into labor and i'm like induce me now make me go into labor right now so they were like we're just gonna put something into your ivy bag and it's gonna start the contractions, and then we're gonna give you something else, and I forgot whatever with what that some oh to um make your water bust. So I'm like, all right, make your water break. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like, yes, let's get this going. Cause like I said, I was past 40 weeks. I was over. I was ready to just have her, and let's go. Like, let's go. Get this over with. So they gave me the IV and everything, and I'm just sitting there chilling, like, mm, 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 cause I already was feeling something. So I already know it was time for me to go into labor but they was like you not in labor yet and everything and that's just little practice practice and hits or whatever to try to me. So I'm like whatever like I know I'm in labor but whatever y'all wanna send me home so send me home I'll be right back so yeah um so I started feeling it and everything and then I got mad nervous once I get nervous I always have to use the bathroom I always have to use the bathroom every time I get very nervous so I'm like I'm like I gotta use the bathroom they're like yeah go to the bathroom now because once once it's time, it's time. Go to the bathroom now. So I'm like, all right. So I went to the bathroom, had my business. I came back, and they was like, um, you so and so centimeters, and centimeters. It's time for you to go to the um, to the um back. Like it's official. You in labor. Let's go. Let's take you to the back. So I'm like, all right. So now I got on the hospital gown and all that. Well, I already had it on, but 
this part is about the hospital gown. I had the hospital gown on. And they like, um, go to so-and-so room. So they tell me where to go. So I'm walking with my sister. And I said, you know, I feel mad air just hitting the, the back of me. Like, I feel mad wind against my butt. So I'm like, and then I just hear my sister say, Tay Tay, what are you doing? <laughs> Why my hospital gown didn't open up and my butt was showing while I was walking to the room and I just see the nurses and everybody like looking but I didn't <laughs> I didn't feel it right away I just felt the wind like probably like five seconds after it didn't open and all that and I just hear my sister yelling what are you doing and the nurses and everybody looking cause she yelling and I was just like oh my god I just started laughing like I know it's open but that that was mad funny I was about to say that shit was funny but yeah that was mad funny so now they take me to this room and like this is the room that you're gonna push in and I'm like okay got the bathroom right there okay got the little sink over there okay it look nice in here but nope that wasn't the room I was gonna push in that was just the room that they were setting me in for the meantime so I was just in that room up until it was time for me to push so it was still good nice and cozy and everything so my mother and my sister was inside the they were in the delivery room when I gave her. So while I'm sitting there in pain, I'm like, I'm not, I think I want to get that epidural shot. They was like, I'm three centimeters. And when I was three centimeters, I was in pain and it felt like I was about to push, like give birth right then and there. So they like, you gotta go all the way to 10 centimeters for you to start pushing. So I'm like, hold on, let me get this straight. Y'all trying to tell me I have to push when I'm 10 centimeters and right now I'm 3 centimeters and I feel like this? So what am I going to feel like when it, when I get to 10 centimeters? They like it's only going to get stronger and stronger and it's going to come closer and closer. I'm like, it already feel like it's coming back to back. So wait, hold on. Alright, come on. Let's get this going. Abudoro. 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 That's what I was like. So... They like you sure you want the apple door? I'm like yeah, I want it because me and pain do not get along. We don't get along. I don't like being in pain. And y'all telling me I'm I'm three centimeters. This is my first child. It's gonna take me a while to get to ten. Y'all telling me I might have her tomorrow. I'm like no. I went in there. I got in there. I got. They admitted me to the hospital like 10 a.m. It was like 10 a.m. when I when I got admitted. I had to stay there, but I know I was there right and early. So. I'm like, I'm, I want that with all shots. So, I can't remember exactly how long it took for the person to come. I just remember I was like, where's this person at? Like, what's going on? Like, I'm in pain. Let's go. Let's get this going. So, I say no. They made whoever was in the room leak it out. They gave me that with all. And honestly, I cannot remember how it felt. I will not say that it hurt it at all because I don't remember that and I know if they heard it I would be like oh that it hurt it like it hurt it but nah I can't say that it hurt it at all the first time okay so um I got that door shot and I was like whoo la la man I was feeling amazing I just, I just felt normal I was out of pain and I was just ready just relaxing I fell asleep I took a nap and everything so um what happened then? Yeah, I felt my water break. I felt my water break, and I was just like, okay. My, I think my water just broke, so she like, she looked under the cover, she like, mm, it did, it did. That's why she was, she like, mm, it did, it did. So I'm like, take a picture of it and let me see it. So she took a picture of it, and it was just like, like water was like blood in it, so it looked just like brown. So I'm like, oh. I thought it was from a water, like, you know? So I'm like, all right cool whatever so let's get past to the part where it was time for me to push so now they rolled me out of that room and they bring me to another room but i was like paralyzed temporarily temporarily paralyzed from the waist down so i could not feel my legs at all i couldn't move my legs at all i was just like paralyzed for the moment so i'm like I just hope that everything goes good with this. I can't feel anything. I just hope that when it's time for me to push her out, I don't feel anything either. So, they brought me to the room. And I say, no exaggerating, I say about 10 
people was in there besides my mother and my sister when I was giving birth. It was about 10 people. And there's people, like, literally coming in and walking out, peeking, walking out. Just like, yo, what's up? What's going on? But I know, like, everybody on that floor was um, fascinated with the whole giving birth experience. So I was kind of in mind. I was just like, like, really? I just coming in, looking. Like, come on. Everybody come in. Come on. Everybody come look at me give birth. Everybody come look at me give birth. So now they started explaining to me what was about to ha happen that day. It was like, I'm about to put my leg up on this piece and put my other leg up on this piece. And they were helping me move my legs up there. Because like I said, my leg, was, my leg was paralyzed for the moment. So they put that leg up and they put that leg up. And they just like, yo, ready? And I'm like, I feel good. Like, I'm not in no pain or nothing. So let's go. So I got my legs up. Yeah, I got to I got to exaggerate a little shit. Got it. Sure so yeah, I had my legs up and my sister was on one side, my mother was on my side, and I was just like, ready? It's about time. So I sort of pushing. They was like, when we tell you to push, they was like, wait, they I was have I was having a contraction. They was like, do you feel that? And I was like, no. So they was like, all right. So since you cannot feel the contractions or the pressure when you are having a contraction, we're going to let you know when you're having a contraction. So that means that you're going to start pushing when we let you know that you are having a contraction. A contraction. So I'm like, cool. So they talk about you having a contraction. Push. So I started pushing. Mm. Okay, stop. And then it was like, all right, you're going to push me. I think I probably like... I think it was like three or four, like push, push, stop, push, push, stop, but like four of them. So when it got to like the fourth one, they was like, all right, this is about to be the last push, but make sure that you do not push too hard because we don't want you to rip. And I'm like, so what I do? I start pushing very hard, but I didn't rip, thank God. So I'm like, all right, I just want this to be the last one. I want to make sure this is the last one. So I started pushing very hard. Like, that's it. She's coming out. Now she's coming out. So as soon as they lift her up like that, they let my sister cut the umbilical cord. So once they lift her up like that, I saw her and I was like, oh, I got my little chocolate baby. She's brown skin just like me. But all along, the, the umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck two times. My daughter is light brown. As you guys can see, she's light skin. But when I seen her, she was like my complexion. But she was purple like that because the umbilical cord wrapped around her neck two times. So she was like basically losing air. Like she was suffocating. So I'm like, oh, but I didn't hear her crying or anything. But I was just looking like, oh, she got mad hair. She mad pretty. They started shampooing her hair while her hair was sticking out of me. She wasn't even out. They started washing her hair and stuff. And I was just like, okay. I didn't mind because I, was, I wasn't feeling no pain. And I was just like going with the flow. They sort of wash her hair and everything. Now that I think about it, that's probably why them biblical cords wrapped around her neck like that. Y'all sitting there want to shampoo her hair and everything just because it's looking pretty? Nah, but um, they wash her hair and everything before she even came out. They sort of wash her hair while she was coming out. So um, they pick her up and they take her over there. And I just see my mother and my sister, it seemed like they just blocking it for me not to see what's going on. And I'm looking like, excuse me, excuse me. And I know, don't look. What you mean don't look? What's going on? What's going on with my child? Why I can't look? What's going on? Somebody better let me know something right now. I can't get about this bed because I'm on that door shop. But what's going on? Like, I want to know. So, they like, don't look. Then they say, you know, I heard her crying. I was like, oh, okay, because I'm not with nothing. Like, no, I'm not with nothing. So, then after they made sure everything was good with her, they brought her and they pulled my chest and I just looked at her and I was like, hi, Stella. And I just started crying and crying and crying. My mother's taking pictures of me. I'm like, my wife taking pictures of me. I'm looking like this. So like, why? Why? But now I'm thankful for those pictures because those pictures, they make me emotional every time I see it. Because I just be looking like, I was looking real ugly and stuff and out of breath and all that. But it's a special moment. It was a special moment. So I was just crying and crying and crying. I was like, oh my God, I'm really your mother now. Like, the journey starts now. Like, she out. She out and she good. It's good. Like, it, the journey has yet. So, that was the story of, of me. That was the story of me giving birth to Starmaya. And now I'm about to tell you guys about the birth story with Antonio. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys. She was born that same day that I went into labor. She was born, they admitted me like 10 a.m. 
and she is born at 10.58, two minutes away from 11 o'clock. So, that's what time she's born at night. I went in in the morning and she was born at night and I was thankful that it was still the same exact thing that I felt like I was in birth, I mean, I was in labor with, like, you know, they trying to tell me, no, 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 but it's still all in one day. So now with Antonio, I was inside the clinic with him the day before I went to birth. I was inside the clinic. But with him, I didn't go to the hospital that was right across the street from my house. I kept, I, I just went to the clinic that was probably was about a 40 minute on a bus, a 40 minute ride on a bus. But it was affiliated with the hospital that I wanted to have both my kids at, that I had both my kids at. So since they were telling me don't do that with Star Mind, what I did with Star Mind came there when I was just ready to give birth and they told me when I'm ready to have another baby for me to go to one of their clinics. I listened this time. I didn't listen in my early pregnancy with him, but I listened. I think probably when I was about six months, I switched over. So when I came there and they knew who I was, I, hey girl. <laughs> so when I went to the clinic the day before, they was already feeling contractions or anything like that. Well, we let you know that you're going to get induced tomorrow if you don't have him, if you don't for a neighbor by tomorrow we could, we're gonna induce you because my son was kind of breech that means he flipped upside down in my stomach so they was like we're gonna send you to this clinic whatever it was i'm like yeah they said they was gonna send me to the clinic on my due date because he was breech when she checked me the day before i had him so i'm like oh my god so she like yeah he was um he was the right way but now he didn't switch sides so i'm like oh my god this is very they was like if he breached tomorrow when we send you to the clinic and they try to switch him around. If he still breach, we're just gonna have to do a C-section on you. Talking about, oh God, that's horrible. So, um, so she was like, I'm gonna give you, um, a paper. You could go home and do these exercises, or whatever. And hopefully he flips up, he flips back up the correct way that he's supposed to be for birth, like head down. So I'm like, all right. So, um, she scraped me. That means she took a finger and she just separated my, um my bag for my cervix so I could go into labor. So she's like, do you feel anything yet? And I'm like, no, I don't feel, I feel the same. So she's like, all right, by the time you get home, you should be in, you should be in labor. You should feel, start feeling contractions. By the time I got home, I started feeling contractions, but she told me to call her about seven o'clock in the morning or whatever. Wait, hold on. I got, I think I got the story a little mixed up. They said, okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it right. I got it right. So, um, She's like, come in in the morning, whatever, whatever. I came in the morning. Once I went to the clinic, for them to flip him back upside down, he was already the correct way because I went home and did the exercise, so he was good. So, um, they made me go right up the block because, oh, no, 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 I got it a little mixed up. No, after that appointment, I'm confused. Hold on, how did this go? Okay, so, yeah, it was the clinic appointment that she told me she's gonna send me somewhere else because he was breached so i went to the other clinic and they told me that he already had flipped back upside down then i went back to the clinic and they told me that they was gonna um induce me if he wasn't if he if i didn't fall in labor by tomorrow they was gonna induce me when i go there so i went there and they induced me they made me have the baby i was already well they told me after she scraped me she told me by the time i go home i was gonna feel contraction I um went home, I felt the contractions. So she told me to call her at seven o'clock in the morning to see if there's any beds inside the um labor and delivery part and if there is beds in the labor and delivery part for me to come in. But I was gonna come in regardless because I was in labor. By the time I went home, I laid down, went to sleep. I, I felt them contractions coming in, but I wasn't gonna go in before seven o'clock. I was gonna go in regardless, but I just wanted to wait. So I called her around 7 o'clock. She's like, yeah, there's a bag. Come in. Do you feel like you're a lady? I'm like, yeah, I'm a lady. She's like, all right, come in. So I came in. And I was like, when I got there, they told me it was no beds available. And I have to wait. So I'm like, listen. Like, yeah, we have to register you and know everything. I'm like, listen. So they say, you know, after they was done registering me and all that, they called me in for a bed. So I'm like, oh, because I don't got time. I called her. It was a bed available. Let's go. So I went in, they were like, all right, yeah, you're in, you're in labor. I'm like, I know. So, um, so, um, what happened next? So now they took me to the back, and I'm telling you, before I even got there, I was on my knees. In the house, I was on my knees. Like, when you in labor and you feel them contractions just pumping, you do anything that you think is going to make it stop, but in re reality, it's not going to stop. 
Some pains is going to keep coming and coming and coming. You could think you're going to bounce on the ball. You could think you're going to bend down, do a split. You could think you're going to do whatever you want to do and it's going to stop. But the contraction is not going to stop until the baby is out or until you get an epidural shot or whatever. So once they gave me my bed and everything, everything was set. I was laying down. They put the IV in me. Whatever they did. After that, I was like, um, can I get the epidural shot? They started laughing at me. Like two of them in there. And I'm like, what's funny? What's funny? I'm dead serious. They're like, you just got here. I just got here, but I been in labor. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean I just got here? I just got here, but I been in labor. So, what's up? I want the epidural shot. I'm like, y'all know that. So, they was like, all right, we're going to put it in for you once you be in your room that you want the epidural shot. And I'm like, thank you. Like, what's so funny? Don't play around with pregnant people. Like, they would be ready to fight you quick. See, I have no idea what type of pain we be in. Don't be sarcastic and don't laugh at me. So I'm like, like, I'm not, I'm not pregnant. So once I got set up in my room and all day, they started with the um, epidural. Not right away, but they came not too long after. And I'm getting the epidural shot done. Get me everybody get out the room once again. And um, I'm just getting every door. And I hear him saying, no, don't go that way. Go the other way. And all this other extra stuff. And I'm looking like, hold on, hold on, hold on. You mean to tell me that an intern is giving me an epidural shot right now? But me, I'm one of those type of people. If something is being done to me or my food and everything or anything like that, I will not catch an attitude with that person because I do not want for them to do anything wrong or evil to my food or my body. So I'm just saying that I. He's sitting here letting the intern do an epidural shot on me. I mean, I understand. I've been an intern before, so I understand that sometimes we have to do the job when it's it's available. Like we can't just practice on a mannequin or a dummy all out. Like so, I'm like, all right, you know what, whatever. He he's old enough. He he's an older man, like really older man. So he should be telling her exactly what to do on my back so they doing it and since it was an intern i knew it was an intern i felt a little pain i can't say it was nothing major and if you know i can say i can't say it was nothing major it was i felt a little pain but it wasn't nothing crazy so i was good i was just sitting there like like you're letting an intern do a um epidural on my on my back but i'm like okay it's like it's whatever you know i, I asked the nurse if she could hold on to me to make sure I don't move, because you know they say if you when you get an epidural shot, you have to stay still. You could just move, make one sudden move, and you could get paralyzed. So I told her since I still since I still felt like I was having contractions. Well, since I was still having contractions, I asked the nurse if she could like hold me. Like I was in this position, I'd be in this position. So I just wanted her to like hold me forward so that I wouldn't move. So that's basically what she's helped me do. She just made sure I didn't move. I, when I feel the contractions come while they were doing that with door shot. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So they did that. And after that, I was like, once again, would I get that with door shot again if I was to have another child? Yes, I would. Every time. I've been having back problems before I even had any children. So right now, I don't see a difference in the, the pain that I have in my back. That I have in my back. So it's nothing to me. It's nothing. I would get that door shot every time. So now I'm just chilling, 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 waiting for them to tell me that I'm 10 centimeters for me to push. But I didn't even have to wait till I was 10. She was like, you told me that when you were in labor with your daughter, you pushed about three or four times and she was out. So you sound like a professional. Let's go. You're eight centimeters. Let me see if you can push this boy out. Are you willing to do that? Do you want to push? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, let's go. So, pop, pop. Let's get this baby out right now. So, yeah. So, she, um, I had my, um, I had my son in the room that I actually said I thought I was going to have my daughter in. They let me push in that same exact room this time. It was a nice bathroom, nice sink. You no, know? they let me push in that room this time. The first time with my daughter, they took me out and put me into an operating, operation room, whatever. So, yeah. So, I'm like, let's go. So she's like, yeah, to me. let me see if you can push her. She, I sort of push her. She's like, okay, yeah, yeah, he's going to come out, so you can push him out. So she let me push my son out at 8 centimeters. So, yeah. 
stop pushing and pushing and anything though. He came out and I just like, oh, I was so happy. But again, he wasn't crying. The umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck, but it just didn't take as long for him to start crying as long as it took with my daughter. But you know, everything was good. Once they finally did put him on me, they, I was like, hi, Antonio. And started crying once again, of course. And now the storage is just getting really full on my phone, so I have to just make this quick. But I pushed him out. They immediately, they immediately told me to put him on my breast so he could start nursing just like they did with somebody. And he just clicked on right away. He was lit. He was he was getting that milk. Like, like he just he just clicked right on. Like he just went with it. He was with it. So um so I might wasn't with it at first. So um I just like thank you guys for watching my video. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe because I'm almost at a thousand subscribers currently while recording this video. By the time I post it most likely I don't have a thousand subscribers. So thank you guys and make sure you subscribe, comment, like for more videos.